Hi, welcome to Three Things Thursday with Robert Hertel. So last week, we had the pleasure of having Mike Ferry himself come out to our market. We were at the Marriott and Garden Grove, and he did a two-day event called Running Through the Finish Line. So first of all, thank you to Neil Schwartz for putting that on. I know it probably cost you a few dollars, but hopefully it was worth it for the people that attended. I mean, I know it was worth it for the people that attended because I was there. So thank you, Neil, for that. But we had Mike out there. And the reasoning for this is we're at that time of year we've talked about before where people kind of die down. It's the end of the year. And we needed that boost, that pick-me-up, that spark, that change in our mindset to say, look it, let's go. Get back at it. It's time. These are your money-making months. And you can still make 20, 30, 40, 50 plus thousand dollars before the year closes. Don't give up on the year. Go out there and get it done. On top of that, setting ourselves up for a great first quarter of 2018. We've talked about this before. Your beginning of 2018 is determined by your end of 2017. Okay, the activities as you do. So Mike's out here for two days just changing our mindset, changing our attitude, getting us ramped up again, saying, hey, look, it's been a good year, but let's finish it off. Let's have a great fourth quarter. So absolutely amazing event. Typical Mike Ferry. You're sitting there, you're just note after note. You're just scribbling things down because the guy's got so much wisdom to pass on. So you're just, there you go. Oh, what are you saying? What was that? Did you get, you know? So a lot of fun, a lot of fun how that works. So I took a lot of really good notes. And if you went to the event, hopefully you took some good notes too and you're reviewing those and implementing some of that in your system, right? Now, what's great about these Mike Ferry events is that even if you've attended a bunch of Mike Ferry events before, you still always get a couple different nuggets. But what's really good is that he mostly says a lot of the same stuff, but he changes the words around a little bit to where it's like, oh, now I get it. Oh, the way he said it this time really resonated with me. He's great at that. So it's amazing when you read through your notes and you go, oh yeah, he said that before, but this time really got me. You know, and it's also sometimes where you're at. Maybe it hits you this time because you're at a different place, different time, all right? So amazing. But what I wanna go over today is he went through a section that I've never heard him do before. Maybe he's done it, I just haven't heard him, but I've also never really heard anyone go over it, okay? As far as a step-by-step -step process or different activities do, and that is, what do you do when a deal falls apart? What do you do when a deal falls apart? We've had it. We all have deals fall apart. I don't care who you are. You have deals that fall apart, right? The question is, what do you do? And I've never really heard anyone go, hey, when a deal falls apart, do X, X, and X. You know, we talk about deals falling apart, but nothing like that. So of all the things that he went over, that section to me for that two days last week was the most powerful. That was the, wow, I really like that. So what I want to do today is our three things Thursday today is go over some of the points that he mentioned on what to do when a deal falls apart. Because I think if we could implement some of this stuff, man, it's going to change a lot of what we do when that happens. And we're going to shift gears and move right on. A, it won't happen that often, and B, when it does, it's not gonna bother us. Because I think we're all guilty of this to some extent. When a deal falls apart, man, it like ruins our day. Some, some of us, it ruins like our week, our month, when a deal falls apart, and, but we can't let that happen. We gotta get over and get going. So that's what I wanna touch on today. So three things Thursday, what do you do when a deal falls apart? And this was courtesy of the Mike Ferry run through the finish line event last week. All right, so let's jump into this. Number one, I'm gonna start with my favorite. This was my absolute favorite point of the whole two days, and it's this one right here. When a deal falls apart, focus on what created it instead of what made it fall apart. Now, I'm gonna say it again because it was that powerful to me. When a deal falls apart, focus on what created it instead of what made it fall apart. That's huge. Because we tend to, when a deal falls apart, go, oh, focus on that. Oh, what happened? How did this happen? Why did it happen? We're focusing on what made it fall apart. What we need to do is focus on what created it. How did I even get this deal to begin with? Okay. Now, maybe it's prospecting, but what was it? Was it an expired listing? Okay, let me get back at it. Was it a for sale by owner? Let me get back at those. Was it a delinquent mortgage? Let me get back at the, what, what created it? Was I door knocking? Was it a phone call? Was it past client? What created it? Focus on that, not what made it fall apart. It's already fallen apart. It's already done. That's over. We got to get back to what created it so we can get another one. That, to me, was the most powerful thing the last two days. So hopefully, you can 
take that and implement that in your business. Because again, deals fall apart. They fall apart. Focus on what created it, not what made it fall apart. Thought that was excellent, excellent stuff right there. Okay. Next one he talked about. Call, I'm sorry, when a deal falls apart, immediately call three or four past clients. When a deal falls apart, immediately call three or four past clients. Okay, you're frustrated. The deal fall, falls apart, you go, ugh, you know? And we were so reluctant to get on that phone and start prospecting again and just listed, just sold, expires, like that. You know what, deal falls apart, call three or four past clients. Hey, Joe, hey, Jane. You know, Robert, Century 21, your real estate agent, have that conversation. Now, this does two things. One, it eases the blow, right? Because that's done. Hey, let me pick up the phone. Let me call some past clients. They like me, hopefully. You know, I like them, hopefully. And we're going to have a good conversation. We're going to have a good conversation. I know it's going to be positive. I know it's going to be happy. That's the kind of thing I need right now. I'm going to do three or four of those. The other thing that does is it gets you in touch with your past clients and centers of influence, which some of you have a very hard time doing, okay? So we've sold two things at once here, right? You're gonna feel better because you're having three or four really good, positive, happy conversations. And on top of that, you're touching base with your past clients and centers of influence, which you need to do to generate more referrals from them. So that's really good as well. Deal falls apart, all right, we're moving on. Let me call three or four past clients right away. Thought that was really good. Okay. Next one he said was this. Put scripts and systems in place that will keep it from happening again. Quit duplicating your failure. That last part's the best, but I'm going to read it again. Put scripts and systems in place that will keep it from happening again. Quit duplicating your failure. Quit duplicating your failure. Quit duplicating your failure. Those words just kept sticking with me. Quit duplicating your failure. When a deal falls apart, eventually you got to put systems in place so it doesn't happen again. Okay. Now I know you don't focus. We talked about earlier. Don't focus on why it happened, but say, hey, look it. Let's put systems in place so we have less deals fall apart. Maybe it's delegation. Maybe you have a delegation issue. You're trying to do too much, and that's the problem. Maybe it's you know you're not doing the follow-ups enough. You know, maybe you're not pre-qualifying enough. If you had pre-qualified better, you wouldn't have had this disaster at the end. You know, you'll figure it out, but put those in place so they doesn't happen again. Quit duplicating your failure, okay? That is very powerful. Now, those last few words can actually be used beyond the, when a deal falls apart. Quit duplicating your failure. Okay, hey, look, we're in October. You've had plenty enough time this year to be able to go back, review where your business has come from and where you're prospecting and figure out what's working, what's not working. Hey, I've been spending all this time calling these people or prospecting these people, but all my deals are coming from here. Well, stop working here or figure out why you're not getting any business from here. Quit duplicating your failure. Hey, I'm, I'm spending all this money on this type of marketing. Well, what's your return? I got nothing out of it. Well, quit doing that. Quit duplicating your failure. You know, I, I've gone on listing presentations, but I'm not getting any contracts. I'm not getting extra actual listings. Okay, well, let's review why that is. Let's quit duplicating your failure. So you get the point here. Everything that you're doing, review it. Review what you're doing, why deals are falling apart, why you're not getting listings, why you're not getting any business from this particular prospect in this particular marketing, and stop doing that. Figure out why it's not working and fix it or just stop doing that particular activity. Quit duplicating your failure. Great. We got to duplicate what's working, our successes, right? Not the failure. So I thought that was really powerful too, all right? So, so think about those. When a deal falls apart, focus on what created it instead of what made it fall apart. That's huge. Number two, when a deal falls apart, immediately call three or four past clients. And number three, put scripts and systems in place that will keep it from happening again. Quit duplicating your failure. And here's the thing. I'm going to do just one bonus one. No matter how good I am, I'm still not going to get them all. Just the bottom line, folks. Okay? I don't care who you are. Greatest real estate agent in the world. Greatest salesperson in the world. I don't care. You're not going to get them all. You have to come to grips with that. So look at it. Deal falls apart. You go, hey, look at it. Not going to get them all. I need to get most, but I'm not going to get them all, no matter how good you are. Keep that mindset. Just go back to it. Let's get another one. Let's get another one. Keep the pipeline full. All right? So that was my three things Thursday. That was what I, my biggest takeaway was from the Mike Ferry event. 
what to do when a deal falls apart. Again, I've never heard anyone really go through a whole segment like that. There was more points to it. I just highlighted the few that really stuck with me the most. If you want the rest of them, let me know and I'll send them to you. Send me an email or put a comment below. I'd love to do that. But man, I'm telling you, if you were at the event, review your notes, figure out those couple things that really stuck with you that can help you move forward. If you weren't, Again, if you want to meet with me, go over those notes. I'm happy to do that. Or at least put these in your system. Put those, get them going, get them going. I'm sorry, get them going, get it working, all that fun stuff. And I'm telling you, it'll make a difference in your career. Great time to close out the year. Great time to set up your first quarter. Let's go get it. All right? That's your three things Thursday for the week. Please subscribe to my channel so you get all my videos, usually a couple a week. I hope you have a great week. And I look forward to speaking to you again next week.